possibly disturb your sleep. Postum is just whole wheat and bran, skillfully roasted and slightly sweetened. And it has such a tempting aroma, such a rich, full-bodied flavor that you want to drink it always. It's easy to make, and anybody can afford Postum because it costs less than one half cent a cup. Get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Drink it instead of coffee, and then you'll know why it's the favorite mealtime drink in one out of every nine homes in the United States. If coffee's been keeping you awake, see if you don't sleep better and feel better when you drink Postum. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, excitement is still running high in Pine Ridge over the possibilities of finding oil on Abner's property. A squire skimp who owns a lease on the ground and is now selling stock in the project has erected an oil derrick, and it looks as though the actual drilling of the well might start any time. At present, the activities of the Pine Ridge Motion Picture Company are at a standstill uh, due to the fact that the old fellows discovered last Friday that the camera they recently ordered was for silent pictures only. <laughs> As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jot and Down store. Listen. Yeah, if you don't mind, Ocean Johnny, Squire, give us a good skinning on that oil well. Skinning? Why, well, of course, ain't no oil over there, and he knows it. Well, he built that oil, Derek, right over there in my yard. Yeah, but I believe he just done that to get everybody excised around here so he could sell a lot of stock in it. He did, huh? Uh, just over there a while ago. Ain't no machinery over there to drill with or nothing else. Well, he claims he's got some ordered summer's lawn. I don't believe it. In the first place, that lumber he built that derrick's out of ain't stout enough to hold up no machinery. Just a uh, stock selling scheme's all it is. And we was big enough geese to buy $200 worth of stock in it. Well, we weren't the only ones. I think everybody in town bought some. Cedric was in here a while ago telling me he bought a $10 in truck, sold his dog to get the money. Old Ring? Yes, sir. The best varmint dog that ever struck nose to a trail. Sold him to the Macmillan boy. Well, he ought to be bored for the samples. And us, too, for as that goes. Well, I wish Squire'd either start drilling or give up the ID-1. I'm sorry I ever leased the ground to him. My place looked like a picnic ground over there yesterday. Folks drill for miles in here to see the oil well. Yeah, I could see you had a big crowd over there. I thought at first some of your family might be down sick, but help me think about the oil there. Oh, it was a sight. Little Pearl wanted to put in a lemonade stand right there in the yard. <laughs> and might have did well to it with it, too. But we never had no fresh lemons, and that stuff they make out of lemon flavor, and I don't suit my taste. You were a squire over there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's standing there on the porch making them a speech. According to him, well, that aisle there is going to, there's going to be so many of them things around here, a fella ain't going to be able to find room to build a house here in town. <laughs> Did you stay there all day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Had to. Keep them young ones off of the dairy, climbing all over it. Yeah, that's dangerous the way it's built. Oh, my, yes. That youngest boy, Snake Hogan's climb clean to the top of that thing and wouldn't come down. Sat up there and sassed me. I couldn't get to him. Had to get his mama to promise not to whip him before he'd come down at all. Oh, yeah, that youngster's getting plumb out of control. Robert's the only one of them children just going to mount to nothing. Yeah, well, now, there's a lot of others around here that needs to visit the woodshed a little oftener, too. Who's that? Ca oh, Grandpappy Spears. Huh? Oh, yeah. He's in here a while ago looking for you. What was he want? I don't know. He never said. Just want to know if you're here. Uh -huh. Come in, Grandpappy. Yeah, come on back, Grandpappy. Yeah, the very fellow I wanted to see you, huh? Yeah, Abner was telling you he's in here looking for me. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, here, take this box, Grandpa. No, keep your seat, Abner. I can stay right, right here. <clears throat> Back up here to the far and throw myself out a little. It's getting cold out. Yes, it is. Awful nippy. Yeah, blackberry winter set in, I do believe. The way that sun was out yesterday, why, well, I thought the cold weather was over. You say you wanted to see me, Grandpa? Was it something private? No, I just wanted to find out for sure what you aim to do about making that moving picture on. Oh, why, we decided just give up the idea, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Found out that Camry we bought was out of style. And can't make talking pictures with it. And that fellow at the theater in there at the county seat says there ain't no market for them silent pictures no more. Uh-huh. Well, that's what I hear, but I just want to hear you say it. I feel like order to tell you. Scared you fellas going to run into trouble over that. Well, that's the reason we give up the idea. Decide not to make it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're going to have trouble if you don't. Sister Simpson called me over to the boarding house this morning and asked me for a little advice on it. I think she's aiming on lawsuing you. Lawsuing us? For what? 
Well, she showed me a contract that she signed with you fellas where you'd hire her at so much a week to make the picture. Oh, yeah, well, sure. Yeah, if we'd have made the picture, we'd have paid her, too, but we just ain't going to make no picture. No use to hire somebody for something you ain't going to do. Why, of course not. What's the matter with that old woman, anyway? Might know she'd give us trouble. Well, it ain't none of our business, but I just sort of ought to tell you. No, sure, we appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it ain't nothing to worry about. Pine Ridge Moving Picture Company is unsolved, and that's all they are to it. Lots of these folks around here we had contracts with, too, but you don't hear none of them complaining. Oh, she's just a troublemaker, that's all, that old woman. Oh, well, I can explain it to her and straighten her out on it all right. Yeah, yeah, you ought to. Um, what else is new, Grandpa? Oh, not much or nothing, I don't reckon, Mom. Guess you heard about Ruth Wilkerson? No. What's the matter with Ruth? Fine baby boy over at that place this morning. Well, I do know. Well, here, we'll have to send him over a box of cigars, Abner. Oh, <laughs> That little baby couldn't smoke cigars long. Oh, I don't mean the baby, Ruth. Or, wait a minute here, no, no. Well, Granny's Ruth owes us a cigar. And that's how I found out about it. I seen Moe's Moot smoking a cigar a while ago, and he told me where he got it at. Uh Uh-huh. The boys were joshing Moe's down there at the barbershop. Said seeing him sitting around there with that cigar in his mouth was a sure sign of rain. Hog with a stick in his mouth. (laughs) Oh, you've heard that old wheeze before, Abner. Well, I never said I hadn't. You act like it. So Ruth's got a boy. <laughs> well, it'd be hard to get along with now. Well, I just hope this one takes after their mammy. I'll swan every one of them children. they just a spitting image of old Ruth. All got them big watery blue eyes. Yeah, hey, I tell him as far as you can see him. And I do believe he was a homeless somebody I ever knowed. He could pass for a scarecrow, that fella. Yeah, recollect that old letter saying of mine, beauty's only skin deep. Well, they ought to skin him, man. <laughs> now, ain't you ashamed of yourself talking about Ruth that way? There ain't an honester man in the community than Ruth Wilkerson, and you know it. I never said nothing about him not being honest. Yeah, like Charity always says, Pure, pretty is it pretty does. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Huh? Uh, pretty is it pretty does. Well, what in the world are you talking about, Mom? Well, that means, uh... You might have a pretty face, but if you don't act pretty, or better to say, you might have an ugly face, we're going to talk about you. But if you act pretty, you're pretty. Yeah, but, uh, well, what do you mean, act pretty? If you're nice. All there's kind to everybody and all that. Oh, well, how about the widow Abernathy? She's always nice to everybody. Now, would you say that she's pretty, the widow? Why, well, uh, Granny, you would pick out somebody like that. <laughs> She's pretty in the way she acts. Well, uh, I never did see her doing any acting, then. Now, you don't appear to understand what we're talking about. I now. understand what you're talking about. You said pretty was as pretty does. And I, I never said no such a thing. You see, there's lots of folks we sort of think of as being pretty, but when we go to tearing them apart, they ain't... Tearing them apart? Folks? Well, there's got to be some character behind them, Abner. Who? Characters. And I don't know nothing about that. Honest and such as that. You know what character means. Well, I don't care what you say, Grandpap. Anybody that sets up and says Ruth Wilkerson and the widow Abernathy is pretty while well, there's something wrong with her head. Wait, wait a minute. Man. Here comes Squire. Argue with me about it. Now's anyway. a good chance to have it out with him about that oil well. Yeah, yeah, that's what you ought to do on this. Yes, and he's we're stockholders in that oil company. We can demand that they start drilling right away. It's just a thing. You tell him, Mom. I'll back you up in it. Yes, just sir. Let me handle him. Yeah. He thinks he knows all about business. Oh, well, old Squire, he's pretty hard to argue with him. Well, he don't know any more about it than I do. I'll tell him that. Well, now, just be careful. Don't wind up by buying any more stock in it. That's what I'm thinking. Don't you of. worry. I wouldn't buy nothing he ever had. Well, yeah. I've heard you say that before, and then Squire's walked right in and better told better, you in. Better, better, better mind that. Yeah, 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 don't be quiet. Okay, okay. Come in, Squire. Hey, howdy, Squire. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How am old friend this morning? Uh, come on, back, Squire. I want to talk to you. Yes, yes. Well, good. I, I want to talk to you, too, Tom. Um. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. No, no, no. Thank you, Tom. No, I haven't got but a minute. Uh, I have some papers here to serve, Tom, um, but uh, naturally us being such good friends and all, why... I thought it was only fair to you that I should come over and uh, discuss it with you a little first. Yeah, about that oil well, I... Uh, no, no, this isn't the oil well, um. Uh, the oil well's a fine proposition. That's looking better every day. I'm tickled to death over it. Yeah. But, now, on this other proposition, as you know, um, I have been acting as a uh, agent, uh, manager, you know, 
for a number of people around town here whom uh, you have signed to appear in your first motion picture. Oh, yeah, well, that's all off now. See, uh, we decided not to make the picture square on account of we got the wrong kind of a camera. It just takes silent pictures. They don't say nothing when you say Yes, it. yes, I understand all that, Lum. But now I'm afraid that you're going to have to pay these salaries to my clients regardless of whether you make the picture or not. Well, they can't expect us to pay them when we ain't even... Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Lum. I don't care to discuss it any further. You can take the matter up with our attorneys if you care to make the settlement. Well, it looks as though the old fellows may be forced to make that picture after all. Some mothers who are able to meet almost any situation don't quite know what to do when their children refuse to drink milk. Some mothers threaten. Johnny, you drink that glass of milk this very instant or you won't go to the movie Saturday. And then again, other mothers promise. If you'll be a good boy and drink all your milk... I'll give you an extra helping of ice cream. But there are many, many smart modern mothers who get their children to drink milk without any pleading, without any scolding. Here's what they do. They give the youngsters hot postum made with milk. And you should see the children go for it. Not only because of the delightful, full-bodied flavor of this delicious cereal beverage, but because postum has a rich, dark color that appeals to children, keeps milk interesting, and makes them feel just like grown-ups. And youngsters can drink all they want of it, too. For Postum contains no caffeine, no stimulant of any kind, nothing that could possibly cause nervousness, indigestion, or sleeplessness. It's simply whole wheat and bran, skillfully roasted and slightly sweetened. And unlike many rich, sweet drinks, Postum made with hot milk will not take away their desire for the other foods they should have. So if you want your children to drink milk and like it, give them Postum made with milk. You may hear Lum and Abner again next Wednesday evening at this same time. This is Lou Crosby saying good evening for the boys and for the makers of Postum. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.